Madam President, I have the honor to present to you and members of the Board of Trustees, the faculty, and the class of 2018 of Barnard College who have assembled here today for the annual presentation of degree candidates. It is my pleasure to declare the 126th ceremony of the presentation of Barnard degree candidates now open. It is now my honor to present Jolene Caruso Fitzgerald, Chair of the Barnard Board of Trustees, who brings greetings from the board. Thank you, Sion. To the graduating class of 2018, I bring greetings and warmest wishes from the Board of Trustees. There are a few unforgettable occasions in life, and commencement is one of them a celebration of the past, and a toast to the future. I am so delighted to be here with you all today in one of the most majestic buildings in New York City. As chair of the Board of Trustees, I have had the honor and privilege of speaking at every commencement since 2011. Although this commencement ceremony is particularly poignant for me, perhaps even more so than my own in 1981 because today is my last commencement address as board chair, and after 18 years of serving the college as a trustee, I am ending my term. It, <laughs> it is a bittersweet moment, and I suspect, like you, I feel joy in reflecting on my accomplishments, a little bit of anxiety about what the future may bring beyond Barnard, and tremendous emotional attachment to my alma mater. In the decades since my own commencement, which was held on the Barnard lawn in front of what is now the magnificent Milstein Center, the college has undergone dramatic changes, not only in the physical plant, but in the entire university ecosystem. The quad was an enormous courtyard since Sol's Tower did not exist. The Diana was Macintosh, a modern circular building whose space was mostly below ground. <laughs> Columbia was all men, and JJ's was a disco on the weekends. <laughs> there was no foundations curriculum. Computer science courses did not exist, mostly because there weren't computers. <laughs> And Barnard was among 230 women's colleges in the country. Today, there are fewer than 50. And nothing about the many years since my graduation has been predictable either. As a writing major, I found myself working on Wall Street. I married my first year Columbia boyfriend, and I had two children much later in my 30s. You will find that your path will be similarly unpredictable. And my best advice to you all is to embrace the unexpected, accept the difficulties and challenges gracefully, seize every opportunity and unique experience, but know that the one constant in life will be your connection to Barnard. Wherever life takes you, Barnard will be there for you, personally and professionally, in enduring friendships and intellectual pursuits, and in the confidence that I see you all emerge with today. I hope you all stay close to the college in whatever may, ways are most meaningful to you. You don't have to be a trustee and make big gifts, gifts, although we will gratefully accept them. Your connection can be as simple as keeping track of your classmates on Facebook, participating in reunions, writing an article for the magazine, attending a lecture or a dance performance, talking to prospective students, or simply wearing a Barnard cap and singing the alma mater whenever it moves you. 
The rewards you will reap from these ties will make your lives fuller and definitely richer. I promise you that. So today, I leave with you. <laughs> but I remain confident and hopeful about the future since Barnard will remain forever in our hearts and minds. Congratulations and Godspeed. Good afternoon. I'm Linda Bell, Provost and Dean of the Faculty, and it's my honor and pleasure to be here today to offer warm congratulations on behalf of Barnard's faculty to the amazing graduating class of 2018, and of course to your family and friends who have gathered here to honor you. Your graduation is a big marker in your life, huge in fact, and you will return to it often, 10, 20, 40, even 80 years from now. You'll reflect on many things about this day, how incredibly young you look, the friends you made, the, influence that, the influences that pushed, pushed you in the direction that became your life. Although you each arrive at this moment from a different place, you are forever connected by your Barnard experience. And I hope that this will translate into a true community that gently guides you, that gives you the courage to try and permits you to tumble, occasionally even to fall, and that pushes you forward with deliberation in your life. The distinguished Barnard faculty, through their innovative scholarship and their creative teaching, have gifted you all with the tools to succeed in your academic and professional lives, to write and speak with clarity and force, and to possess the knowledge and fortitude to examine with critical questioning that which is unclear and that which is false. With great appreciation, and much affection for their collective and invaluable contributions, I ask that the Barnard College faculty please rise so that you, the class of 2018, can demonstrate to the faculty just how much they mean to you. For me, this is an extra special graduation. I have witnessed the class of 2018 grow from first years to seniors through a unique and I will call it a fine-tuned lens. For in two and a half weeks, my youngest of two sons will also graduate from college. To the parents in this amazing and iconic hall, known admittedly more for its kick line than commencement, I promise you that I can relate. I will revel in pride at the achievement and growth of my own son as he crosses the stage, as I acknowledge with astonishment the dramatic passage of time that in seemingly fast forward speed has morphed my adorable little boy into a confident and altogether worthy young man. But let's admit it, both my son and you, class of 2018, are graduating into an ever more complex and imperfect world. A society too often indifferent to the suffering of others, too often out of touch with the truth. So as you begin your professional life's journey and throughout your careers, pay heed to this world's imperfections and steer clear of complacency in society and in yourself. Your Barnard education positions you well to take this on. First, remember that you are unique because at some point you choose to be different. And you see the world clearer when you learn through the eyes of others. As a Barnard alumna and anthropologist Margaret Mead once said, and I quote, if we are to achieve a richer culture, we must recognize the whole gamut of human potentialities and so weave a less arbitrary social fabric, one in which 
each diverse human gift will find a truly fitting place. Simply put, make room in your lives for a social fabric woven from the experiences of others, especially those who today may seem furthest from you. Second, if I may, demand as you always have and as your Barnard education has insisted on fact. Challenge myth as equivalent to lie and refuse to be swayed by those who sweep away fact in the interest of cause or ideology. No small feat. It is doable. I have seen it in you as a class and as individuals, and personally I am awed by the, your Barnard experience and by each of you. You are brilliant, strong, and beautiful, and as you head to your next adventures and through the paths that will outline your lives, I know you will take bold steps. But whether in your professional career, in your civic lives, or in your communities, however defined, Remember that progress is incremental and that the collective force of a group is truly more than the sum of the individuals who comprise it. Remember to insist on and fight for the core principles that have shaped and defined your Barnard education, an appreciation for difference and a reliance on fact. And wherever your path takes you in the years ahead, pause, please remember the fun Remember the laughter, remember the friends, and come back to us. We'll be here rooting you on and welcoming you back with wide open arms. Congratulations, class of 2018. We wish you wonderful things ahead. Thank you. Good evening, President Bylock, Provost Bell, Dean Hinkson, faculty and administrators, family and friends, and the class of 2018. My name is Alexa Pinsky, and tonight I am honored to share with you my academic reflection. Throughout our time at Barnard, I am sure we have all had that one magic class that got our hearts and our minds racing. A lesson that showed us how we could translate what we were learning in our little corner of Manhattan into something expansive and impactful for the world around us. This special moment for me was in a chemistry class that launched chemistry from a molecular to a global scale. I recall one specific day in Dr. Austin's chemistry course when we were learning about the chemistry of metals. We paid particular attention to the metal lead as Dr. Austin's lab focused on the chemistry of lead and the proteins it binds to in our bodies. It just so happened that the detrimental effects of lead in the drinking water had recently become a topic of intense national scrutiny based on the lead-contaminated water supply of Flint, Michigan, a city not far from my own hometown. Unlike other metals, lead is incredibly toxic, and even a little bit in our bodies is extremely dangerous. Children are particularly susceptible to the effects of lead poisoning, which can lead to stunted brain development and learning disorders. One day, she asked us to tease apart the nuances behind the complicated metal chemistry that was flushing through the pipes of flint that involved metal atoms taking on charges in water. The basic chemistry lessons we learned that day in class felt incredibly relevant and increasingly urgent on a public and national scale. So for the next few years, with the help of powerful mentors and professors, I chose to spend my days at the microscope focusing on the effects of metals in our bodies at the cellular level in Dr. Siever's laboratory. However, looking back on that day in class, 
Dr. Austin pushed us to see how we could use what we had learned to help further current research efforts. Efforts that could one day help people affected by the disastrous poisoning of the residents of Flint. We have all spent the last few years of our undergraduate experience at Barnard focusing in on our own niche topics and majors, and I imagine that our academic experiences were very similar and yet uniquely different. Whether you choose to zoom in on the metal atoms or zoom out on the people affected by the water crisis, it is important that we all find our focus in the years to come and apply it to help our surrounding communities. I cannot wait to see how we all take what we have learned within Barnard's four New York City blocks to help better the world we live in. Congratulations, class of 2018. Thank you. In 1931, Barnard established the Frank Gilbert Bryson Prize to recognize the senior who receives the most votes of her classmates for her contribution to Barnard during her college years. In keeping with tradition, no one in the class, including the recipient, knows the outcome of the balloting until it is announced at this ceremony. This year's Bryson Prize is awarded to Dean Hinkson, the envelope, please. <laughs> It's really sealed. <laughs> Aku Akweve. Aku, could you please stand? Congratulations. This is a great honor and well deserved. Good evening. I'd like to extend a warm welcome and thanks to President Bylock, Provost Bell, Dean Hinkson, our trustees, our faculty, staff, parents, family, friends, and the brilliant Barnard class of 2018. <laughs> I am Armani Moody. It is an honor to share my reflections with you today, and I hope you enjoy. I begin with a quick anecdote. A number of my Barnard senior friends and I are all sitting down to brunch at a restaurant. Two of our friends mentioned that they will be going to a drag queen show the next day. After hearing this, a few of us exclaim, oh wow, tell us how it goes. Then, one of my friends says, y'all, how do heterosexual cisgendered women operate in a queer space such as a drag show? Let's unpack that, go. <laughs> I share this story to communicate the type of intellectuality that Barnard develops within its students. Barnard women are constantly internalizing, investigating, and interrogating what they see around them. We deeply internalize our passions, our frustrations, our aspirations, investigating them fully, and then interrogating until we find solutions. How are we going to mobilize around this issue? What tools are needed to provide equity in that community? How am I going to get summer housing so I can accept that unpaid internship? <laughs> and then we figure it out. All of my academic experiences at Barnard have pushed me towards that phrase, figure it out. For example, I think back to not wanting to take a required class for my minor and instead creating my very own syllabus for an independent study with Professor Rivera. And I was so honored that our independent study inspired Professor Rivera to develop a real class based off our semester together. I think about starting the 70-page thesis I just completed. It was the, 
It was the first week of school and I was crying. Some may say I'm always crying because I'm a Pisces, but regardless, I was crying <laughs> because I had anxiety over starting that thesis. Once I started writing it, I was starting the rest of my life as this thesis is the foundation for my life's work. It was scary and overwhelming, but then I figured it out. And now, months later, I have a 70-page work on multicultural social justice education that uplifts and empowers marginalized students of color. Okay. The, de <laughs> <laughs> the diligence and discipline of that project exemplifies the character of Barnard students. We are ambitious, hardworking individuals who strive for whatever lies right above excellence in our endeavors. To close, all I have accomplished here would not have been possible without the prevailing theme of my education, support. In the end, while academics are the very reason we stepped foot on this campus, I believe that it is the love and support I received during my time here that I will remember for an eternity. The friends who offered me unconditional sisterhood, the professors and advisors that pushed me towards academic greatness, the classmates that inspired me, the love that guided me, with all of this, I figured it out. Class of 2018, we figured it out. Congratulations, class of 2018. My name is Gabrielle Bullard. And I'm Grace Ebach. We have had the honor to serve as your senior fund co-chairs. We would like to thank the Barnard senior class who have supported this initiative and helped spread the word. Our work would not have been possible without the help of the entire senior fund committee. The committee devoted their time and talent to raising money to ensure the success of the next generation of bold Barnard students, and of that you should be very proud. 75% of the money raised is going to the Bear Essentials Fund, an extra financial aid pool that provides funds to pay for items not covered by traditional financial aid packages. The other 25% of gifts goes towards supporting the Bridge Fund, this fund will support students whose financial situation changes after their first year. We are pleased, very pleased, to announce that we have raised over $25,000 with 60% class participation. <laughs> we have our generous classmates, alumni, and Barnard faculty and staff to thank for this incredible achievement. As we celebrate our success today, let us remember that this achievement is one that we are truly privileged to have worked towards. We must take it upon ourselves to encourage and support those who pass through our gates. The Senior Fund Committee believes the Bridge Fund truly reflects the character of our class. We are a class driven by the desire to improve the lives of those in our community. We look forward to supporting future generations of Barnard students. Thank you and congrats! On behalf of the Student Government Association and the Senior Class Council, thank you to our Board of Trustees, President Bylock, Provost Bell, Dean Hinkson, distinguished guests, beloved faculty, administrators, and staff. And good evening to our family and friends. From the bottom of my heart, and on behalf of all seniors, thank you for your unconditional support these past four years at Barnard, and now beyond Barnard. But most importantly, hello and good evening to my amazing class of 2018. 
My name is Ambika Mukherjee, and I've had the honor of serving as your senior class president. So, as noted lyricist and occasional philosopher, the rapper Drake once said, I know this is good, but I know this ain't the peak, though. I think he means that we are celebrating the culmination of four life-changing years of our lives, but we're nowhere near done. We have so much wonder and excitement ahead of us. But as we see the end of college and are now looking forward to what lies ahead of us, it's easy to feel overwhelmed with nostalgia as we prepare to toss our mortar boards in the air. It's easy to feel like we have so much life and experience behind us and our postgraduate lives couldn't be nearly as memorable, fun, challenging, and inspiring as this brief moment in our lives here has been. So this is what I charge my fellow seniors here with today. A challenge to us all to embrace our futures with excitement and not dread. In this past year, I've spoken to alumni who here I'm nearing graduation and react with sadness and longing in their voices for the years behind them. They'll tell me to enjoy the remaining time in college because adult life is hard and sometimes boring. So that's our challenge. How do we enter this new chapter of our lives with gusto and energy and not look back at college with rose-colored glasses? I think our alumni friends can forget that college wasn't always fun and easy for everyone, and we are at risk of this too. We can still appreciate this incredible experience Barnett has been. Just because we have finally left the comfort of our campus gates, now in this new phase of our lives where our best friends won't be down the halls from us anymore, let's not succumb to those moments where we feel like everything we possibly could have enjoyed and achieved is over and it's too late. Or worse, let's not convince ourselves we are unfulfilled and unaccomplished just because we didn't work as hard on that one paper as we could have we didn't win that one award, we skipped that party that everyone said was amazing, and endless other moments of dissatisfaction and regret. Because that's actually the beauty of the new chapter of life that we have begun. The best years of our lives are not behind us. They are a part of us as we embark on the scary but exciting future we all have yet to write. We are all so young. It's never too late to remember that there is still so much left to accomplish, to learn, to enjoy, and equally as important, to fail at, but then to still get up and keep on trying. So, to my bold, beautiful class of 2018, let's embrace how much each of our stories is yet to be written. There is still a world of love, laughter, and learning out there for us to fill up our pages with. And now as alumni, we have each other's backs as we do this. Congratulations to my classmates, and a huge thank you to our friends and families. We now turn to one of the most important moments of our commencement, the presentation of the Barnard Medals of Distinction to individuals who represent the college's ideals of excellence, innovation, intellectual curiosity, and service. On February 4th, I flew to Newport News, Virginia to present the citation to Katherine Johnson. The remarkable Miss Johnson will be 100 years old in August, so going to her was the least we could do. We filmed the presentation so that you could see it today. Katherine Johnson, gifted mathematician, aerospace pioneer, defying barriers of gender and race, because nothing in life could hold you back. We have been to the moon, we have seen the stars. You are bound for college.
1962, John Glenn asked for you and you alone to double check electronically generated figures before his orbit around the Earth. And when Neil Armstrong was the first ever to set foot on the moon, you proudly watched on a small TV knowing the part your calculations had played. You also wrote or co-wrote 26 research reports, the first woman in the flight research division to receive credit as an author. And in 33 years at NASA, you never missed a single day of doing the work you loved. Oh, no. Mrs. Johnson, you are an American hero, along with every woman at Langley, along with Dorothy Vaughn and Mary Jackson, and anyone anywhere who has had to walk half a mile to use a bathroom, or has boldly stepped out of the shadows to make a difference. You took others into space, making space here on Earth for women in science everywhere. We know how much you love to count, so please count on this. We can't calculate the path that our students will take to go when they graduate to find their dreams. But we know that your remarkable story will inspire them, however it is they get there. It is my honor to present you the 2018 Barnard Medal of Distinction along with a universe of thanks. Mrs. Johnson, I'd like to present you with the Barnard Medal of Distinction. Thank you for inspiring us. Thank you. Thank you. It's a beautiful. Hi, I'm Rowan Hepskini, a Barnard Senior in Women's Gender and Sexuality Studies. I will now present the citation to Anna Quinlan. Anna Quinlan, author, journalist, winner of awards, part of the fabric of the literary world, and part of this college forever. Like me, you are Philadelphia born and Barnard bred. You were a writer from the start, crafting your first story at the age of 12. But with this college degree in hand, your destiny seemed set. On May 15, 1974, you listened to Margaret Mead deliver your commencement address, shook hands with then President Peterson, and set off. Looking back, your application to Barnard noted, quote, an urge to write the great American novel, because I love to write and always have. You sensed early on that criticism was essential to the equation. You longed to know if you were good enough to succeed. Clearly you were, and clearly you did. From general assignment reporter at the New York Post, to columnist at the New York Times, to the highest ranking woman in the newsroom. With nine novels, nine years delivering the last word for Newsweek, a memoir, collections of columns, and books of wisdom like Short Guide to a Happy Life, you have taken more readers than we can count on every kind of journey. You draw characters we cherish, give voice to complex family dynamics, and tackle issues an activist can love, observing day-to-day -day experiences for women not as isolated events, but as part of a larger societal realm. Your service to Planned Parenthood is another reflection of your no-nonsense commitment to causes that matter. You have sold millions of books, made every bestseller list the Times has to offer, and yes, you won a Pulitzer Prize. <laughs> Yet with all that acclaim, you have never once let Barnard down, serving as board chair for eight years and as an ardent alumna for the last 44. My class, the most diverse in the college's history, will do everything imaginable in lives just beginning to take shape. And we can learn from you because you are the amalgamation of every story you've ever told. At this moment of our graduation, no matter our major or our course, you make us less afraid to define our own success, to write and speak our truths, to know that whatever we embody, there is a place for us in this world. On behalf of my classmates and anyone anywhere who is drafting their own story, I am proud 
and honored to present you with the 2018 Barnard Medal of Distinction. Thank you, Ms. Quinlan, for leading the way. I'm Sandra Goldmark, Associate Professor of Professional Practice in Theater and Director of Sustainability and Environment. <laughs> and I am honored to present the citation to Ria Sa. Ria Sa, environmentalist, activist, woman at the helm, leading voice and a voice of reason in protecting the world we call our own. You were raised in Boulder, Colorado, the daughter of Korean immigrants. Something in that majestic Rocky Mountain sky seemed to take hold very early on. You and nature always got along. Then you came to Barnard and really dug in, majoring in environmental science and setting your course. A year of teaching earth science, a Fulbright to Seoul, Korea, a master's from Harvard University, and on to the Packard and then Hewlett Foundations, where you led clean energy and climate change initiatives. In 2009, President Obama nominated you to the US Department of the Interior as Assistant Secretary for Policy Management and Budget. With all you did there for the environment, your push for the department's first chief diversity officer was a move especially close to our hearts. In 2015, you became president of the Natural Resources Defense Council, Council because fighting for what's right is what you do best. With nearly 500 scientists, lawyers, and policy pros, and the support of over 2 million members, you and the NRDC preserve and protect our environment for people from all communities, races, ethnicities, and incomes. And that means safeguarding the air, water, land, and quality of life that we will pass on to our children. Your influence was felt in the lead up to the Paris Climate Change Agreement and in the cleanup of the toxic water in Flint, Michigan. And when you rallied the crowd at the Women's March in Washington, you noted how each individual there had made a personal choice to make a collective difference. The stellar class of 2018 will soon join you as Barnard alumni, but they have already joined you in the fight for diversity, inclusion, sustainability, conservation, divestment, accessibility, and more. By your example, they see how environmental justice and social justice and women's rights are intimately linked and how our past our present choices and our future are connected as we tackle the biggest challenges of our time. You never take quality of life for granted, and I can assure you, neither shall we. On behalf of my faculty colleagues and our graduates, for whom this work matters very much, I am honored to award you the 2018 Medal of Distinction with a great deal of Barnard pride and with hope for the planet that we inhabit and love. And now I have the great honor of presenting the citation for Abby Wambach. Abby Wambach, American soccer star, world-class athlete, activist for the rights of others, ever the fearless leader on and off the field. You were the youngest of seven kids raised on competition in Pittsford, New York, where family time and polished manners were sacred. With your siblings, it was survival of the fittest, and your toughness and determination showed very early on. 
Soccer, the game that you would someday define, captured your imagination beginning at age four. There was soccer camp, the boys league, Our Lady of Mercy High School, University of Florida. It was one hat trick after another, so that scoring and almost always winning formed the rhythm of your life. You were a tomboy and a rebel, and you practiced your autograph when you should have been studying. <laughs> Somehow, you must have sensed what a star you would become. Anyone who knows your sport knows the tally. You are the all-time leading scorer in international soccer history for both women and men. With 184 career goals, 77 of which with, were made with your head. <laughs> the leading scorer in the Women's World Cup tournaments in 2007 and 2011, the leading scorer in the Olympics in 2004 and 2012, six times the U.S. Soccer Federation's U.S. Soccer Athlete of the Year and more. As a player, you're known for your razor focus, diving headers, and physicality, and for being a relentless competitor. Not even a broken leg could stop you. As a teammate, you are loved for your leadership, always sharing the credit for every goal you've ever scored. But there is a bigger field that you inhabit. You say that true activism is born in heartbreak. You say, find out what breaks your heart and do whatever you can to fix it. That is why you are at the forefront of tackling the gender pay gap for women in soccer, helping set a precedent that went well beyond sports. And following your retirement in 2015, you put your whole being into advocating for inclusion and equality for all athletes. You have been an especially strong role model for kids and the LGBTQ community, knowing from your own experience what being on the outside can mean. You've been vocal about accepting your body, your sexual orientation, your weaknesses, and your gifts. You recently announced that you plan to donate your brain to science so that the impact of heading the ball can be better understood. <laughs> Today, with you as an inspiration, we have this big goal in mind, to practice and persist, to stay honest and bold, to challenge the status quo, and to take care of others. Therefore, Abby Wambach, after the Olympic gold medals, the silver ball, the bronze boot, and all the rest, it is my honor to hand over the 2018 Barnard Medal of Distinction. Thank you for winning the day. How is it going? <laughs> Greetings to President Bylock, Provost, Dean, Barnard faculty, trustees, and the other honorees, Katherine Johnson, Anna Quinlan, and Ria Sa. And to each of the 619 badass women of the Barnard graduating class, 2018. Congratulations, you guys. Congratulations. Doesn't it feel like the second you figure anything out in life, it ends and you're forced to start all over again? Experts call these times of life transitions. I call them terrifying. I went through a terrifying transition recently when I retired from soccer. And the world tries to distract us from our fear during these transitions by creating fancy ceremonies for us. <laughs> this is your fancy ceremony. <laughs> Mine was the ESPYs, a nationally televised sports awards show. I had to get dressed up for that, just like you got dressed up for this but they, they sent me a really expensive, fancy stylist. It doesn't look like you guys got one. <laughs> Sorry about that. So it went like this. 
ESPN called and told me they were going to honor me with their inaugural Icon Award. I was humbled, of course, to be regarded as an icon. Did I mention that I'm an icon? <laughs> I received my award along with two other incredible athletes, basketball's Kobe Bryant and football's Peyton Manning. We all stood on stage together and watched the highlights of our careers with the cameras rolling and the fans cheering. And I looked around and I had a moment of extreme awe. I felt so grateful to be there, included in the company of Kobe and Peyton. I had a momentary feeling of having arrived, like we women had finally made it. Then, the applause ended, and it was time for the three of us to exit stage left. And as I watched those men walk off the stage, it dawned on me that the three of us were stepping into very different futures. Each of us, Kobe, Peyton, and I, we made the same sacrifices. We shed the same amount of blood, sweat, and tears. We'd left it all on the field for decades with the same ferocity, talent, and commitment. But our retirements wouldn't be the same at all, because Kobe and Peyton walked away from their careers with something I didn't have. Enormous bank accounts. And because of that, they had something else I didn't have. Freedom. Their hustling days were over, and mine were just beginning. Later that night, back in my hotel room, I laid in bed and thought, this isn't just about me, and this isn't just about soccer. We talk a lot about the pay gap. We talk about how we, overall, US women, earn 80 cents for every dollar paid to men. Black women in America earn 63 cents, while Latinas earn 54 cents for every dollar paid to white men. What we need to talk more about is the aggregate and compounding effects, the pay gap on women's lives. Over time, the pay gap means women are able to invest less and save less, so they have to work longer. When we talk about what the pay gap costs us, let's be clear. It costs us our very lives. And it hit me that I'd spent most of my time during my career the same way I'd spent my time on that SB stage, just feeling grateful. Grateful to be one of the only women to have a seat at the table. I was so grateful to receive any respect at all for myself that I often missed opportunities to demand equality for all of us. But as you know, women of Barnard, change is here. <laughs> women are learning that we can be grateful for what we have and also demand what we deserve. Like all little girls, I was taught to be grateful. I was taught to keep my head down, stay on the path, and get my job done. I was freaking Little Red Riding Hood. You know the fairy tale. Just one iteration of the warning stories girls are told the world over. Little Red Riding Hood heads off to the woods and is given strict instructions. Stay on the path. Don't talk to anybody. Keep your head down, hidden underneath your handmaid's tail cape. <laughs> and she does, at first. But then she dares to get a little curious, and she ventures off the path. That's, of course, when she encounters the big bad wolf, and all hell breaks loose. The message is clear. Don't be curious. Don't make trouble. Don't say too much or bad things will happen. I stayed on the path out of fear, not of being eaten by a wolf, but of being cut, being benched, losing my paycheck. If I could go back and tell my younger self one thing, it would be this. 
Abby, you were never Little Red Riding Hood. You were always the wolf. So when I was entrusted with the honor of speaking here today, I decided that the most important thing for me to say to you is this. Barnard Women, class of 2018, we are the wolves. In 1995, around the year of your birth, wolves, yes, weird, wolves were reintroduced into Yellowstone National Park after being absent for 70 years. In those years, the number of deer had skyrocketed because they were unchallenged, alone at the top of the food chain. They grazed away and reduced the vegetation so much that the riverbanks were eroding. Once the wolves arrived, they thinned out the deer through hunting. But more significantly, their presence changed the behavior of the deer. Wisely, the deer started avoiding the valleys, and the vegetation in those places regenerated. Trees quintupled in just six years. Birds and beavers started moving in. The river dams the beavers built provided habitats for otters and ducks and fish the animal ecosystem regenerated. But that wasn't all. The rivers actually changed as well. The plant regeneration stabilized the riverbanks so they stopped collapsing. The rivers steadied, all because of the wolves' presence. See what happened here? The wolves, who were feared as a, as a threat to the system, turned out to be its salvation. Barnard women, are y'all picking up what I'm laying down here? <laughs> women are feared as a threat to our system, and we will also be our salvation. <laughs> our landscape is overrun with archaic ways of thinking about women about people of color, about the other, about the rich and the poor, about the powerful and the powerless. And these ways of thinking are destroying us. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We will not Little Red Riding Hood our way through life. We will unite our pack, storm the valley together, and change the whole bloody system. Throughout my life, my pack has been my team. Teams need a unifying structure, and the best way to create one collective heartbeat is to establish rules for your team to live by. It doesn't matter what specific page you're all on, just as long as you're on the same one. Here are four rules I've used to unite my pack and lead them to gold. Rule one, make failure your fuel. Here's something the best athletes understand, but seems like a harder concept for non-athletes to grasp. Non-athletes don't know what to do with the gift of failure. So they hide it, pretend it never happened, reject it outright, and they end up wasting it. Listen, failure is not something to be ashamed of. It's something to be powered by. Failure is the highest octane fuel your life can run on. You've got to learn to make failure your fuel. When I was on the youth national team, only dreaming of playing alongside Mia Hamm, you all know her? Good. I had the opportunity to visit the national team's locker room. The thing that struck me most wasn't my hero's grass-stained cleats or their names and numbers hanging above their lockers. It was a picture. It was a picture that someone had taped next to the door so that it would be the last thing every player saw before she headed out to the training pitch. You might guess it was a picture of their last big win or of them standing on the podium accepting gold medals, but it wasn't. It was a picture of their longtime rival, 
the Norwegian national team celebrating after having just beaten the USA in the 1995 World Cup. In that locker room, I learned that in order to become my very best, on the pitch and off, I need to spend my life letting the feelings and lessons of failure transform into my power. Failure is fuel. Fuel is power. <laughs> Women, listen to me. We must embrace failure as our fuel instead of accepting it as our destruction. As Michelle Obama recently said, I wish that girls could fail as well as men do and be okay. Because let me tell you, watching men fail up, it's frustrating. It's frustrating to see men blow it and win. And we hold ourselves to these crazy, crazy standards. Wolfpack. Fail up, blow it, and win. <laughs> Rule number two, lead from the bench. Imagine this, you've scored more goals than any human being on the planet, <laughs> female or male. You've co-captained and led Team USA in almost every category for the past decade. And you and your coach sit down and decide together that you won't be a starter in your last World Cup for Team USA. So that sucked. <laughs> You'll feel benched sometimes too. You'll be passed over for the promotion, taken off the project. You might even be finding yourself holding a baby instead of a brief briefcase, watching your colleagues get ahead. Here's what's important. You're allowed to be disappointed when it feels like life's benched you. What you aren't allowed to do is miss your opportunity to lead from the bench. During that last World Cup, my teammates told me that my presence, my support, my vocal and relentless belief in them from the bench is what gave them the confidence they needed to win us that championship. If you're not a leader on the bench, then don't call yourself a leader on the field. You're either a leader everywhere or nowhere. And by the way, the fiercest leading I've ever seen has been done between mother and child. Parenting is no bench. It just might be the big game. Wolfpack. Wherever you're put, lead from there. Rule number three, champion each other. During every 90-minute soccer match, there are a few magical moments when the ball actually hits the back of the net and a goal is scored. When this happens, it means that everything has come together perfectly. The perfect pass, the perfectly timed run, every player in the right place at exactly the right time. All of this culminating in a moment in which one player scores the goal. What happens next on the field is what transforms a bunch of individual women into a team. Teammates from all over the field rush towards the goal scorer. It appears that we're celebrating her, but what we're really celebrating is every player, every coach, every practice, every sprint, every doubt, and even every failure that this one single goal represents. You will not always be the goal scorer, and when you're not, you better be rushing towards her. Women must champion each other. Yes. This can be difficult for us, Women have been pitted against each other since the beginning of time for that one seat at the table. Scarcity has been planted inside of us and among us. This scarcity is not our fault, but it is our problem. And it is within our power to create abundance for women 
where scarcity used to live. <clears throat> As you go out into the world, amplify each other's voices, demand seats for women, people of color, and all marginalized people at every table where decisions are made. Call out each other's wins, and just like we do on the field, claim the success of one woman as a collective success for all women. Joy, success, power, these are not pies where a bigger slice means a smaller, a bigger slice for her means a smaller slice for you. These are infinite. In any revolution, the, the way to make something true starts with believing it is. Let's claim infinite joy, success, and power together. Wolfpack, her victory is your victory. Celebrate it. Fourth rule, demand the ball. When I was a teenager, I was lucky enough to play with one of my heroes, Michelle Akers. That's right. <laughs> she needed a place to train since there was not yet a women's professional league. Michelle was tall like I am, built like I'd be built, and the most courageous soccer player I'd ever seen play. She personified every one of my dreams. We were playing a small-sided scrimmage, five against five. We were 18 years old, and she was, well, Michelle Akers, chiseled, 30-pound, 30 30-year-old 30 powerhouse. For the first three quarters of the game, she was taking it easy on us, coaching us, teaching us about spacing, timing, and the tactics of the game. But by the fourth quarter, she realized that because of all this coaching, her team was losing by three goals. In that moment, a light switched on inside of her. She ran back to the goalkeeper, stood one yard away from her, and screamed, give me the effing ball. And the goalkeeper gave her the effing ball. And she took the ball, and she dribbled through her entire effing team, and she scored. Now, this game was winner's keepers, so if you scored, you got the ball back. So as soon as Michelle scored, she ran back to her goalie, stood a yard away from her, and screamed, give me the ball. The keeper did. And again, she dribbled through us and scored. And then she did it again. She took her team to victory. Michelle Akers knew what her team needed from her at every moment of the game. And don't forget, until the fourth quarter, Leadership had required Michelle to help, support, and teach. But eventually, leadership called her to demand the ball. Wolfpack. At this moment in history, leadership is calling us to say, give me the effing ball. Give me the effing job. Give me the same pay the guy next to me gets. Give me the promotion. Give me the microphone. Give me the Oval Office. Give me the respect I've earned and give it to my wolf pack too. In closing, I want to leave you with the most important thing I've learned since leaving soccer. When I retired, my sponsor Gatorade surprised me at a meeting with a plan for my send-off commercial. The message was this, forget me. They nailed it. They knew I wanted my legacy to be ensuring the future success of the, sport, of the sport I dedicated my life to. If my name were forgotten, that would mean that the women who came behind me 
were breaking records, winning championships, and pushing the game to new heights. When I shot that commercial, I cried. A year later, I found myself coaching my 10-year-old daughter's soccer team. I'd coached them all the way to the championship, hashtag humblebrag. <laughs> One day, I was warming up the team, doing a little shooting drill. I was telling them a story about when I retired. And one of those little girls looked up to me and said, so what did you retire from? <laughs> and I looked down at her and said, soccer. <laughs> and she said, oh, who did you play for? And I said, the United States of America. <laughs> And she said, oh, does that mean that you know Alex Morgan? <laughs> Be careful what you wish for, Barnard. <laughs> they forgot me. But that's OK. Being forgotten in my retirement didn't scare me. What scared me was losing the identity the game gave me. I defined myself as Abby Wambach, soccer player, the one who showed up and gave 100% to my team and fought along my wolf pack to make a better future for the next generation. Without soccer, who would I be? A few months after retirement, I began creating my new life. I met Glennon and our three children, and I became a wife, a mother, a business owner, and an activist. And you know who I am now? I'm still the same Abby. I still show up and give 100% now to my new pack, and I still fight every day to make a better future for the next generation. You see, soccer didn't make me who I was. I brought who I was to soccer. And I get to bring who I am wherever I go. And guess what? So do you. As you leave here today and every day going forward, don't just ask yourself, what do I want to do? Ask yourself, who do I want to be? Because the most important thing I've learned is that what you do will never define you. Who you are always will. And who you are, Barnard women, are the wolves. <laughs> Surrounding you today is your wolf pack. Look around. Go ahead, you can do it. <laughs> Don't lose each other. Leave these sacred grounds united. Storm the valleys together and be our salvation. Abby, thank you so much for that rousing speech. The soccer player in me would say that you definitely scored. <laughs> it is truly a privilege to be here today to celebrate the Barnard class, or perhaps I should say the Barnard Wolf Pack, yeah. of 2018. <laughs> you are amazing and inspiring, and I must confess, to feeling a special kind of kinship with you. After all, this is my first Barnard commencement, and you are the first group of seniors that I have met last fall, and you are the first I've had the pleasure watching evolve and grow through your final year at college. 
So congratulations. You make us so proud. Many here today have sat right where you're sitting, maybe not in the velvety seats of Radio City Music Hall, which I have to say are pretty spectacular, but in some auditorium or gymnasium or on a grassy lawn somewhere in the world. And they have waited for the moment when their name is called and they can shake a president's hand, breathe a sigh of relief, and graduate from college. It even happened to me. 21 years ago, on June 14, 1997, I sat in a folding chair on a huge playing field in the hot California sun as I graduated from the University of California, San Diego. Although I don't remember every aspect of that day, I do remember to being equally amazed and terrified by the prospect that I would soon be packing up all of my belongings and leaving the state of California where I had spent my entire life. I realized that I didn't know exactly what my future would hold, but I promised myself I would try, really try, to take the unexpected in stride. Some of what I thought was in store for me happened, some of it never transpired, not even close. When I graduated, I could have vaguely, vaguely predicted a career as a scientist, but nowhere in my wildest dreams did I imagine that I would have the honor of standing before you as Barnard's president. Who would have known? <laughs> You'll find this phenomenon playing out time and time again throughout your lives, sitting at an important juncture, thinking that you might know what lies ahead, and working to be okay with what is still unclear. I hope that at those times, you will try to remember who and what got you there. I also hope that you remember that it's okay not to know everything about what is yet to come. That's part of the beauty of life. The effort and passion and drive combined with uncertainty keeps things interesting. My first big Barnard event was last September's convocation, a memorable and humbling experience for someone so new on the job. But I had a lot of support that day in the audience and on the stage, including from our keynote speaker, Carol Dweck, Barnard class of 1967, fellow scientist and mentor. Carol started her speech by a look back at her first year at Barnard, 1963. Betty Friedan's The Feminine Mystique and Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech set the tenor for those incredible times. And what she came to understand in the decades since and with a little perspective was that Barnard had given her the tools she needed to understand and navigate the complex world before her. Barnard had given her and her classmates the values that helped guide them and had given them the sense that doors were there for them to open. Carol also talked about her research in psychology, which has shown that people have different mindsets about their talents and ability. You can think of intelligence as a fixed trait, you get what you get, or you can have a growth mindset which sees intelligence as a quality that can be developed over time and with practice. Not surprisingly, people with a growth mindset are not afraid of challenges, they show greater resilience when they fail, and they often achieve at a higher level when facing difficulty. Abby Wambach, Growth Mindset Exhibit A. <laughs> I would say that this is true for you too. Class of 2018, not just because you have made it through college, but because you have made it through this college. <laughs> As Carol said, at Barnard, we've given you the knowledge and the tools to take the next steps in life, but we have not laid out the precise path for your future. You will need your growth mindset to help you do that. You have learned from your stellar faculty and from one another that everything is a process. Everything takes time and effort and often requires retracing of steps. Many of you are graduating in majors that you'd ignored early on. Many of you are pursuing jobs and careers that you could never have imagined. 
Some of you are doing exactly what you expected to do today, but let's check in again at your fifth reunion and see what the story is then. Simply put, there is not one linear path. You don't hop on the linear path bus when you arrived on campus as first years, and you aren't likely to get on it anytime soon. Of course, as a class, there are certain shared experiences that have framed your college years. You have witnessed and participated in movements like Black Lives Matter and Me Too. You have rallied for transgender rights and our trans admissions policy. You have watched Hillary Clinton's campaign and the election of Donald Trump. You have made Barnard more sustainable and more inclusive. You have challenged each other to engage in civil dialogue and discourse. And you have recognized the need for an anti-stress culture that will help our students for years to come. But as one of 619 students of the class of 2018, you are also distinct. What has served to shape this moment for you will be different from what matters most to any of your classmates. They will be overlap, of course, but what gives meaning to individual lives is just that, individual. I urge you to call on that individual, personal memory today as far back as it can take you, and let that be a moment of review. A particular professor, a favorite course, a book you devoured, a lab paper you wrote, a trip, a roommate, an advisor, a special guest who spoke on campus whose words changed the way you think about the world. Mark these moments and keep them. And no matter what you do from here, let your time at Barnard serve as a solid foundation. That is our hope. And let it lend perspective. This is an excellent starting point for what we know will be truly remarkable lives. Do not let go of your dreams and your beliefs and your fight, but do not lose sight of your perspective along the way. Abby just demonstrated the importance of that. Katherine Johnson has lived that for nearly 100 years. Rhea Sa would tell you that if asked, and Anna Quinlan always tells us that. In fact, in 2000, Anna wrote Short Guide to a Happy Life, coincidentally as part of a commencement speech that she was supposed to give that year. Here's what Anna said. When you look at the faces of a class of graduating seniors, you realize that each student has only one thing that no one else has. When you leave college, there are thousands of people out there with the same degree you have. When you get a job, there will be thousands of people doing what you want to do for a living. But you are the only person alive who has sole custody of your life, your particular life, your entire life. Thank you, Anna, for helping with these words of wisdom. And thank you, seniors, for being the best possible demonstration of what makes Barnard so great. I'm delighted to know you and to have taken at least part of this journey with you. Please have a great time out there. And please bring your worldly, wonderful perspectives on life back to campus. We wish you well in every way. Congratulations. I will now be joined at the podium by Dean of the College, Avis Hinkson, who will present the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts. To the class of 2018, I join with the many others that have offered you words of congratulations today. I wish you only the very best in all, that your future, in all of your future endeavors. I look forward to being your sister alumna for years to come. President Bylock, it is my distinct privilege and great pleasure to present to you now the gifted, the empathetic, strategic, globally minded, community building, environmentally conscious, enthusiastic, and absolutely extraordinary women of the class of 2018.
I do so with mixed emotions, for we will certainly miss their presence and voices on campus. Included are some members of the class on whom the degree was conferred last February, those who have completed in this term the requirements for the degree of Bachelor of Arts, and a very few, indeed, who have pledged solemnly to complete academic work during the summer. <laughs> I will call only the names of those present here today. The order of presentation will be by major fields, and candidates will process to the platform as their names are read. And I ask you, really please, 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 hold your applause until the last senior has been presented. Africana Studies, Amanda Honeywell. Angela Myers. Katea Wooten. American Studies. Isis Brown. Levi Kratz, <laughs> Megan Dinnerstein, <laughs> Isabella Gerasi, <laughs> Hannah Yu, <laughs> Talia Gosi. Sloan Androge Gustafsson. Gabrielle Iorio. Angela Jorge. Noah Catler Kupetz. Cassidy Meda. Inga Norell. Maya Pollock, Talisa Ramos, Sarah Robeson, Maya Spiske, Mabel Taylor, Anthropology, Zachary Barone. Anna Carapal, Augusta Chapman, Lauren Conway, Marie Pierre Guyard, Jennifer Haley, Sophia Rome, Sarah Krosnick. Jenny Nee, Anna Schindel, Michaela Warsaw, Applied Mathematics, Margot Barclay, Anna Carlson. Architecture. Caitlin Engine, Laura Laschek, Virginia Gershom, Hannah Orens, Ramvipa Ramyapura, Vera Savory, Kaylee. Streeter, Art History, Annabelle Arafova, Alicia Bansall, Lou Clinton Cellini, 
Julia Crane, Josephine Heston, Jessica Hopin, Caroline Laporte Burns, Yu Yuan Liu, Victoria Martinez, Alexandra Pardo, Eugenie Cron, Olivia Rodriguez, Emma Snover, Sharon Wu, Constance Zhu, Art History Visual Arts, Lily Arts, Karina Hardy, Rachel Shu, Sophie Covell, Georgie Lee, Echo Ma, Lindsay Manchurian, Colette McDermott, Fakira McDoom, Chloe Morris, Emily Rofi, Charlotte Spritz, Anissa Tavagar, Jacqueline Tobbs, Ella Viscardi, Asian and Middle Eastern Cultures, Jung Ah Chang, <laughs> Lucy Garthwall, Ann Jacobs, Catherine Serco, Annie Wen, Kathy Sia, Biology, Amelia Beyer, Lee Beatty, Gabriella Belnelvis, Jenna Bergman, Mary Bronwyn Chalkley, Maya Fraser Butler, Isabella Haywood, Tasneen Kabir, Esther Kang, Caroline Kikiwa, Hannah Ku, Sabrina Krebs, Madison Lysak, Megan Marone, Elizabeth McNenny, Onanji Mijoso, Samantha Ong, Leah Harkin, Eliana Pickholtz, Natalie Pino, Laura Raymond, Emma Ruskin, Danielle Shalom, Christina Stevens, Ellen Teen, Alyssa Trejo, 
Shayna Tordris, Justine Vaughn, Amen Wickes, Biochemistry, Krish Bach. Christina Castias, Lizette Garcia, Abera Nadine, Nadine Yassine, Chemistry, Rachel Jadko, Aisha Hassin. Vivian Wang, Isabel Klein, Jenny Lamb, Choi Mack, Amanda Sisnowski, Andromina Mita Un Unkia. Chemical Physics, Lauren Babb. <laughs> Classics Latin, Anna Lochte. Comparative Literature, Danielle Abeta. Rebecca Ose. Kanoko Fujioka, Elizabeth Switzer, Tina Shan, Computer Science, Gurgana Altiva, Sarah Breen, Narcisa Kondranu, Shalon Conley, Sloan Quay, Hannah Fuzman, Bridget Jackson, Joanne Kim, Kiyun Kim, Curris Lamb. Tiffany Lee, Layla Misrahi, Ogochuku Wudu, Aisha Karesi, Rathna Ramanathan. Nana Sharat, Lauren Jong, Dance, Kavari Madabashi Sharas, Alexis McCarthy, Armani Moody. Sophia Pellegrim, Nicole Rondo, Economic and Social History, Tanya Balau, Nicole Farchi Seagull, Marina Fortunato, Catherine Gillis. Constance Howard, <laughs> Romina Jimenez Alvarez, Molly Catherine Miller, Ailish O'Kelly, Charlotte Oswald, Samantha Pass, Aliza Penn. 
Abigail Smith, Zenka Stephanishin, Ching Zhang, Economics, Shemaisa Ahmed, Sarah Ajadan, Catherine Alfaro, Kamya Aurora, Kirsten Kabakuyan, Ellerine Carl, Stephanie Ching, Ali Cohen, Haley Collins, Nurjess Devar, Manini Desai, Ziying Dong, Abigail Ebert, Mackenzie Foss Fosser, Rosalie Froome, Rufio Gonzalez, <laughs> Tiffany Hemaker, <laughs> Noah Herman, <laughs> Charlotte Hughes, <laughs> Famida Hussein. Mumtaz Jaffer, Rebecca Jedwab, Anne Elizabeth Kim, Haley Kim, Bona Ku, Cheryl Lee, Rachel Lipsky. <laughs> Julia Luby, Eleanor Masinster, Meredith McEnany, Olivia Mem, Michaela Mary, Ellen Mischinski, Sophia Mita. Natasha Nori, Natalie Odell, Leanne Peterson, Samantha Raisin, Kayla Regan, Stephanie Rothermill, Zoe Ryan. Rachel Solomon, Aditi Somani, Aiden Sullivan, Ada Tam, Lily Taylor, Natalie Trinidad, Rachel Suna. Heather Joe, Isabel Weiss, Christine Chu, Alexandra Zenrufinen, Xingyuan Joe, Alexandra Zorn, Jai Sho. Economics and Mathematics, Layla Ardahali, Zainab Gulal, Daisy Homoka, Jiwan Kwong, Joyce Kwong, Sydney Mulch, 
Autumn Chu. Mengfei Su. Candice Vaklin. Yidi Wang. Tian Weinberg. English. Simisola Akanihola. Caroline Andrews. Morgan Apostle. Ophira Berenholtz. Molly Breitbart. Gabrielle Bullard. Brianna Burston. Ariana Busby. Ann Chachas. J. Clara Chan. Carrie Chapman. Juliana Clark. Adeline Cummins. Catherine Dallas. Catherine Edmondson. Chanel Ekji Moling. Leora Fishman. Amelia Garner. Uma Ganchigar. Elizabeth Harding. Brianna Hines. Melissa Ippolito. Gabriella Hoberman. Sophia Hotung. Isabel Ivins. Emma Jones. Nia Jettelson. Aubrey Uhouse. Hannah Kaufman. Sylvia Corman. Gia Lappy. Sarah Lerner. Alexandra Longo. Sarah Marsh. Nora Matheson. Emma McMahon Murdoch. Caitlin Morris. Johnsell Mirad. Olivia Nathan. Twilin Nguyen. Chloe Nunez. Alexandra Oshinsky. Taylor Quinn. Crystal Rabido. Sophia Richards. Luz Romero. Dylan Sachs. Ileana Sandberg. Kara Spence. Kara Sugarakis. Haley Wade. Emma Warner. Georgia Xenophantos. Michelle Shu. Audrey Yun. Environmental Biology, Anna Kaplan. Environmental Policy, Afsana Akhtar. Zoe Berg. Lila Livingston.
Madeline McGilvery Wallace, Ella Merrill, Emmy Metzger, Shayi Olojo, Environmental Science, Grace Cushman, Lauren Hayashi, Anuka King, Chandler Precht, Natalie Sant Santana, Persis Ticknor Swanson, Vanessa Van Dusen, Ethnomusicology, Sadie Yudkin, <laughs> Film Studies, Varya Ambra Mova, Darcy Cajun, Francis Dean, Gabriella DeCamps, Caressa Howard, Ruby Mastro Dimas, Vivian Ran, French, Morela Blum, Leticia Duller, Mariah Harvey. Health Information Sciences, Hollis Mills. History, Kai Barrios. Adele Bernhard, Jordana Bickle, Liliana Brown. Elena Berger, Jessica Hall, Pepper Carroll, Rachel Carter Wagman, Jenny Davis, Jacqueline Diggs, Allison Emmett. Sophia Fain, Emily Felson, Naomi Fisher, Victoria Foreman, Sarah Gale, Linda Gordon. Anna Howler, Erica Haravelt, Josephine Hirsch, Nicole Javorski, Phoebe Jones, Catherine Kemp. Madeline King, Aphrodite Kungolos, Tamar Lindenbaum, Blair McClure, Kalpana Mohanty, Jordan Patterson. Alexandra Peebles, Lena Rubin, Sophia Whitman Sandmeyer, Eun Wu, Megan Wiley, Molly Zenger, 
Morgan Zell. Mathematical Science, Angelina Ben. Elizabeth Kwan. Samantha Small. Meg McCabe. Mathematics, Sarah Edelman Munoz. Mathematics and Computer Science, Jocelyn Chang. Mathematics and Statistics, Helena Veloff. Soraya Sanjana. Music, Rebecca Simmons. Yay. <laughs> Louisa Tambunen. Neuroscience and Behavior. Risa Alam. Ellis Brunig. Lillian Brower. Alexandrina Danilo. Pooja Desai. Holly Dowd. Britt Pennock. Emma Holt. Rebecca Griffin Holt. Angela Hong. Masha Ikromova. Rashi Jane. Pratman, Pratma Jarakin. Lisa Kim. JC Kennard. Hansa Lee. Laura McLean. Adriana Matalva Olgin. Anna Nahim. Elizabeth Newrider. Elena Odward. Alexa Pinsky. Daniela Sagion. Renata Sayo. Ashna Shom. Alina Siddiqui. Alana Tao. Francesca Tao. Anastasia Vasilyeva. Ameta Warner. Philosophy. Francis Lynn. Erin Lowly Wynn. Estella She. Allison Sue. Alexandra Walser, Zane Watson, Cassandra Schock, Physics, Ophira Lumner, Shoshana Levine, Juliana Noto, Charlene Price, Miriam Ramirez, Sierra Watkins, Political Science, 
Katherine Atherton, Angela Bentley, Delora Birakat, Alma Bremen, Hannah Bullard, Susanna D. Martino, Melina Dunham, Anna Esslinger, Asata Evans, Caroline Fian, Elena Feinberg, Hannah Fishman, Allison Freerman, Jennifer Greco, Nikki Hassani Ferreira, Taco Jobava, Logan Jones Merrill, Carissa Josephson, Carthesia Karimi, Nadia Koresh, Charlie Cloden, Rachel Knowles, Claire Liebman, Juja Mamri, Amber Mackey, Sarah Mail, Ariella Martin, Evelyn McCorkle, Lauren McGarry, <laughs> Allison McQueen, Asul Montemayor, Gilan Pages, Francesa, Francesa Perone, Sarah Hoff, Ava Reed, Anika Reno, Alexandra Curioso Rosales. Hafsa Sabri, Emily Silk, Joy Ewing, Psychology, Nawal Abase. Alia Al Sagar, Rose Arditi, Nia Barbie, Zarina Bilgrami, Amy Ravman, Olivia Chow, Natalia Carrero. Catherine Castro, Gabriella Cohen, Morea Colby, Rachel Crystal, I'm sorry, Rebecca Crystal, Danielle Dennis, Letty DeLeo. Kirby Eccles, Julia Ellis, Rayanne Farha, Abigail Feinberg, 
Alexa Fleet. Paula Francis. Dana Frame. <laughs> Jean Riley Fraser. Rebecca Firth. Maria Fernanda Garcia. Dorian Goodman. Karina Gupta. Sarah Hassan. Eliza Hurst. Eliza Holstein. Dominique Holt. Felicia Howe. Kate Howard. Poonam Lakhani. Tanya Lawani. Gabrielle Lipson. Danielle Lovich. Francis Maya. Rachel Mulholland. Julia Maltado. Aduge Ojo. Nina Plotnikov. Charlotte Kinkosas. Krishna Raghunathan. Lapika Raghunathan. Amarellis Rodales. Raquel Rosenberg. Sophia Rouse. <laughs> Catherine Russell. Abigail Sadek. Molly Schwartz. Danielle Silber. Gabriella Sobel. Eliza Solomon. Eliz oh, I'm sorry, Isabel Starkey Jones. Samantha Stepp. Katarina Sufayarova. Ashley Taylor. Emma Toner. Sophia Trujillo. Arela Trussman. Jessica Chita. Elizabeth Sarakis. Winnie Wang. Lauren Wiles. Caroline Willis. Rivki Seidman. Caroline Montgomery in memorandum. Religion. Virginia Exley. Ella Kahan. Doha Tazi Hamida. Lauren Whitaker. Russian Regional Studies. Nicole Edwards. Science, Technology, and Society. Paige Lehrman. 
Sociology. Tiffany Barclay. Dina Cohen. Aisha Dotova. Kelsey Decker. Francesca Ely Spence. Maria Elena Garcia. Emily Goldstein McGowan. Yarimar Gonzalez. Leah Jacobson. Fatima Jaffer. Jillian Johnson. Wallace Kalkin. Sarah Kravinsky. Catherine Lamb. Shoshana Lauter. Chanel Martinez. Maritza Masul. Chelsea O'Neill. Elizabeth Pudo. Ruby Samuels. Elena Seidman. Simon. Spanish and Latin American cultures. Roxanne Padilla. Shannon Peters. Isabel Rivero. Sarah Schroeder. Ami Sosa Vera. Annabelle Torres. Celeste Young. Statistics. Sid Jiao Bai. Avital Elias. Judith Kepix. Teuta Muje. Kathy Yuan. Jessica Jung. Catherine Zo. Theater. Christine O'Coin. Christina Beck. Brittany Burke. Sarah Billings. Karina Gobelbecker. Andrea Joe. Chloe Worthington. Urban Studies. Atseda Isayenhen. Claire Barkas. Hannah Beach. Nicole Blakeman Vasquez. Elena Kaminer. Channing Corbett. Brenna Forrestal. Anika Freudenberger. Morgan Gergety. Anna Jacobs. Ann K. Lai. Shoshana Levy. Tandi Nimbose. Summer Payton. Mira Phillipson. Imani Randall. Amanda Rivkin. Elizabeth Sandlin. Anna Stoneman. Phoebe Willett. Rowan Wu. Women, Gender, and Sexuality Studies. 
Margo Biche, Allison Han, Talia Comran, Ruby Joy Kinney, Emma May, Elena Pettit, Sophie Pugh Sellers, Michaela Schwartz, Rania Sadiq, and now for our senior marshals. Aku Akwe. Omema Al Harashe. Eleanor Altholz. Susie Barr. Angela Beam. Alexis Camuso. Sarah Chardry, Grace Ebach, Rosie Fat, Tejeri Gopal, Vinola Gaudi, Shara Harris, Rowan Heps Keeney. Tiani Wong, Samantha Jabowski, Jabu, Jabubowski, there we go, Eve Marie Couch, Alana Koenig, Elizabeth Lee, Weiluin Liu, Sage Matt. Madeline Malau, Umbika Mukherjee, you walk very slowly, Chelsea Noble, Simisola Olungudo Yea. <laughs> Anandita Parekh, Je Jessica Reich, <laughs> Sophia Rosenberg Kleinberg, <laughs> Mariam Rostam, <laughs> Abigail Rickman, <laughs> Kathiana Santiago Mangual. Yaela Saperstein. And Japrit Sethi. And this is the class of 2018. It was my privilege, acting on the authority delegated to me by the Board of Trustees and on behalf of the faculty of Barnard College, to present these students just named at the Columbia University commencement ceremony held earlier this morning for the degree of Bachelor of Arts with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. I would like to invite the senior class to rise and join in the singing of the alma mater.
There's a college on a hilltop that's very dear to me. And a certain group of students with ties of camaraderie. So we'll sing to dear old Barnard and loyal be and true. and blue. When the day has come for parting and college days are o'er, there will always be a fondness for the good old days of yore. And we'll sing to dear old Barnard as in memory we see. I declare this 126th ceremony of the presentation of Barnard candidates for the Bachelor of Arts degree adjourned. So, so that the academic recession may conclude in an orderly fashion, I ask that all guests remain in place until the last graduate has exited the seating area. At that point, I encourage you to continue the celebration of this fabulous day. Congratulations, class of 2018.